Protein, to give you the protein you need. With less of the sugar, you don't. I'll take that. Yay! 30 grams of protein and one gram. Happening now. With the rise of migrants at the border, we look into efforts to try to reduce the number of people trying to cross into Texas and why some of those families have a difficult decision once they reach the border. On Monday, every adult is eligible to receive a COVID-19 vaccine. Effective today, the state of Texas updating the rules for visitations at nursing homes. The changes to in-person visitations next. And more fallout from last month's winter storms. CPS Energy suing several of its natural gas producers, accusing them of price gouging. Why they say this action protects their customers. It's gasoline to go. You already get your groceries delivered. Now, how about fuel? Coming up, a new business is launching a service. Sure is a beautiful Tuesday, but the low clouds will return along with it humidity and another chance of rain. I'll tell you more coming up in a few minutes. The news at five starts right now. First at five, as more people cross the U.S.-Mexico border, could some of them be heading to San Antonio? It's what Health and Human Services is asking the Department of Defense. According to ABC News, HHS is asking to house unaccompanied minors at two bases in the state of Texas. Here at Joint Base San antonio Lackland and on post at Fort Bliss in El Paso. Right now, it's unclear how many minors would be housed at each facility. DOD spokesman John Kirby says the department is evaluating the request. The last time Joint Base San Antonio Lackland was used to house unaccompanied minors was in 2014. Meanwhile, the situation at the southern border is not a first, but the number of unaccompanied children reaching new heights. Why is it happening now? What will be done to help avoid this from happening again? Jesse DeGoyado asked someone who should know, an attorney who has worked nearly 20 years in immigration law in both Rio Grande Valley and as a professor at St. Mary's School of Law. It's part of our effort to find out what's really happening along the line. This may look like a crisis, and to many it is, or is it? To me, a crisis is something that is uncontrollable. Attorney and immigration and law professor federal, Erica Schomer uh, agrees images of children in a crowded holding facility and laying on the floor are no doubt disturbing. But I would say that it's better than them being on the street in Matamoros or Reynosa. Or go back to the countries they fled that she says are just as dangerous. For nearly a year under the Trump policies, children were simply being returned back. Schomer says that's why there's now a record number number of unaccompanied minors, many who she says actually began their journeys with family members, but once at the border, learning their children stood a better chance of being allowed in, their parents chose to stay behind. It's absolutely horrifying to have to make that choice as a family member. But at least now, she says, the Biden administration is working on two programs to help control the number of arrivals. The Central American Minors Program would process them before coming to the U.S. The other would grant refugee status to those escaping persecution in Central America, both based in their home countries. After they're up and running and word spreads, she says... Once this kind of backlog of people who have been pushed back for so long gets worked through, I think the numbers are going to go down and be more manageable. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Meantime, some big news for Texans starting March 29th. That's Monday. All adult Texans will be eligible to get vaccinated. That means anyone 18 or older can schedule an appointment to get the Moderna or the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Anyone 16 or older can make an appointment for the Pfizer vaccine. The Department of State Health Services made the announcement today. They say Texas has administered 9.3 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine thus far, and they want to keep up the momentum. DSHS is still asking providers to prioritize people 80 years or older when scheduling these appointments. And speaking of the elderly, Health and Human Services giving the OK to expand visitation at nursing homes and long term care facilities. So effective immediately, fully vaccinated nursing home facility residents 
can now have close in-person visits with family members and friends who are not essential caregivers. That said, they'll still need to use proper safety measures like wearing a face covering. Outdoor visitation can also be allowed even when there's an outbreak at the facility. You could read more about these changes right now on ksat.com. The new details in a deadly crash from over the weekend. We've learned the name of a man who was killed on Sunday. He's been identified as 33 year old Michael J. Clark. San Antonio police say he was hit by another driver as he was pulling out onto Thousand Oaks. The driver of the truck was taken to the hospital. It's unclear if charges are pending. Crime Stoppers asking for your help to find two men wanted for an aggravated robbery. The first one happened on the north side last Wednesday. They say this man went into the target on 281 and East Bitters, tried to leave without paying. When an employee confronted him, he threatened the employee with a gun and took off running. If you have any information, you can call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Hey, Crime Stoppers also looking for this person. They say on March 7th, this person threatened the clerk at the Circle K on Fredericksburg and Data Point Drive using a gun. The suspect got away with some cash. Again, if you know anything on either of these cases, call Crime Stoppers. The number 210-224-7867. CPS Energy now suing several natural gas suppliers for price gouging during last month's winter storm. In a lawsuit filed Friday, CPS Energy says certain suppliers charged up to 15,000% more for natural gas during the storm. To put that into context, the lawsuit compares the price hike to paying $348 for one gallon of gas or about $7,000 for a full tank during a natural disaster. The lawsuit claims suppliers like Comstock Resources compared its overcharging to, quote, hitting the jackpot, end quote. CBS Energy is asking a Bear County District Court to declare any excessive charges as unlawful and to grant a temporary restraining order and injunction to prevent the gas suppliers from wrongfully declaring a default under the gas contracts. You can find more information about all of this and even view a copy of the lawsuit right now on KSAT.com. And looking outside right now, a beautiful afternoon, a little dusty out there, a little bit of dust in our sky, quite a contrast to what some folks had last night. Let's get to the graphics, take a look at the latest information from the National Weather Service. We had a brief little spin up of an EF1 tornado on the southern shore of Canyon Lake last night around 104 to 106 a.m. You see right there about four tenths of a mile in length, maximum width up to 250 yards, <laughs> estimated max wind gust up to 100 miles per hour. Again, that was Canyon Lake. Bernie also had some hail, the, a fairly large hail, especially on the west and southwest side of Bernie. In Leon Springs, just under half an inch of rain. Right now in Floresville, it's 89. Bulverde picked up 1.4 inches of rain. More on how much rain, rain fell and where, and a look at our next chance of rain coming up, Steve. Thank you, Adam. Let's go to the latest in Boulder, Colorado now, where 10 people were shot and killed yesterday afternoon at a grocery store. We've now learned the name of the suspect. We are also finding out more about those 10 victims. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez in Boulder with more. Today, the magnitude of the loss here in Boulder setting in. 10 people shot and killed at this grocery store. The police chief's voice quivering as she read each name. Suzanne Fountain, 59. Terry Liker, 51. Among those killed, Ricky Olds, a 25-year-old manager at the King Supers. Her family describes as strong, independent, and bubbly. And 51-year-old Boulder police officer Eric Talley, a father of seven. He lost his life in the line of duty. He was heroically trying to save others. The 51 year old was the first to respond to the urgent calls coming from this store as the chaos unfolded around 2.40 yesterday afternoon. It looks like we have an active shooter. Police now say that shooter was 21 year old Ahmad Alaliwi Alisa, seen here bleeding from a gunshot wound to his leg and being taken into custody. He has been charged with 10 counts of murder in the first degree. President Joe Biden ordering flags lowered to half staff for the second time in just a week and urging the Senate to pass gun control legislation. Another American city has been scarred by gun violence and resulting trauma. We can save lives, increasing the background checks so that they're supposed to occur and eliminating assault weapons and the size of magazines. 
And we're told the accused gunman just bought an AR style gun last week. He is being transferred from a hospital to the county jail today, and police are still giving no indication of a possible motive, saying it's still too early in the investigation. Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News, Boulder, Colorado. She claims she's the victim of the good old boy system, but others say that ex-constable Michelle Barrientes Vela abused her power and authority. Allegations uncovered by the KSAT 12 defenders. That's one of the topics of the one hour special called Downfall, airing this Thursday at 9 p.m. For nearly three years, investigative reporter Dylan Collier revealed problem after problem at Precinct 2. It finally led to a law enforcement investigation and criminal charges filed against the controversial Constable. Do you regret your treatment of Leo Moreno and Chris De La Serta? They are named in the indictments. The yellow journalism that has been trade out here against me is get with this individual standing right here today. He has alleged lots of allegations Even against after your me. Indictment, you're still throw yes, that out I am. Uh, yes. Okay. And so if anybody should be apologizing to the community, it's Mr. Dylan Collar, it is you. Okay. You will learn how all of it happened along with previously unseen exclusive video in this case at 12 special program. It's called Downfall. It's this Thursday at 9 p.m. Some who had prolonged effects from COVID-19 say they're experiencing an unexpected benefit from their coronavirus vaccine. Symptom improvement, even relief. For COVID-19 and long haulers plagued with prolonged symptoms like fatigue and brain fog, it's been a long road. But for some, the coronavirus vaccines are helping. I could focus, I could see my sinuses cleared up. Um, it was wonderful. And also the fatigue lifted. Rebecca Neff says she suffered from continuous COVID-19 symptoms until getting a first dose of the Pfizer coronavirus vaccine. The next day I woke up and my head was clear. I, I had not realized how foggy it was even on good days. We were prepared for everything um, except for this. Diana Barrett is founder of the nonprofit Survivors Core Organization, a group of about 160,000 people that links COVID survivors with information. Barrett did an informal and unscientific poll of COVID-19 long haulers and their experience with the vaccine. Of the nearly 700 people who responded, she says 39% reported their symptoms improved after receiving the vaccine. Anywhere from, you know, mild symptom improval to complete resolution of symptoms that we can't say that about anything to date. Barron says not everyone had the same result. 46% of the long haulers polled had no change in symptoms after the vaccine and 15% said symptoms worsened. While more research is needed, some COVID long haulers have hope. I still feel pretty good. And so in another two to three weeks, I will hopefully get the second one. In February, the National Institutes of Health announced they would spend more than $1.1 billion over four years to study the effects of long-term COVID-19. In the meantime, the blood supply in San Antonio and our surrounding area is at a critical low. Mayor Ron Nuremberg stressing this issue in last night's daily COVID-19 briefing. A blood drive at San Antonio College Preparatory High School today helping this cause. That drive held in honor of two-year-old Amy, who was recently diagnosed with a rare form of leukemia. She is one of many in need of a lot of blood treatments in the community. We're giving out 100 more units on a daily basis than we're actually receiving. And the only solution for that is for us to be able to rely on our community support. And that's why blood drives just like today's at Antonian is so important. Pena says that one reason for the shortage, it's because they haven't been able to schedule as many blood drives during the pandemic. You can donate by scheduling an appointment at one of the blood centers, and you can certainly find that link on ksat.com. You've heard of food delivery apps, but now you can get your gas delivered too. The new app a local business has come up with to keep you on the go. These days, you can get pretty much anything you want delivered. Amazon packages, groceries. Now, how about gasoline? Well, a West Side auto repair business revving up by adding a new service, bringing gas right to your car. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains how it works. 
This is an old-fashioned full-service fill-up with the help of modern technology. Robert Black is pumped. It is the future, and, and, and it is currently, it's in other states right now, but it's the first of its kind here in San Antonio, so we're excited to be the first ones to, to start it. He runs Paleo Car Care in the same West Side garage where his dad set up shop for nearly 50 years. Now, shifting gears, they're launching a new service, bringing gasoline to you. You just sit in your living room and get filled up. And while they're at it, technicians check your tires, your brakes, suspension, and even your wiper blades. What fueled this idea was hearing from customers about two things they dislike doing, car repair and getting gas. So here's how it works. First, you download the Paleo Car Care app and sign up for free. You select an address, you select the type of gas you need, you select it and then place the order. Within the hour or a set time, their truck rolls up. And you basically pay the same price that you would pay at the gas station. You get a receipt and your car inspection report. They're launching in just three zip codes near downtown, but plan to expand this year. Delivering gas and convenience, moving full service fill ups That's it. into the fast lane. Marilyn Moritz. You are all set. KSAT 12 News. An interesting concept there. Gas brought right to you. Well, it's great if you run out of gas. I, I also like the inspect. They do an inspection report. They said they can do that right on spot. So. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. That would come in handy for sure. Do they give you a repair estimate as well? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Wash your car. All right. All right, let's take a look at some of the rainfall accumulations from last night. Not everybody cashed in, but some folks did, and some folks had a couple rounds of rain, which really helped them out. Our weather watcher, Mick Homer in Canyon Lake, just... A hundredth of an inch shy of one inch, close enough to call it about an inch. Comfort just over an inch. Kerrville under half an inch, just barely under half an inch. Seguin about a quarter of an inch. And at the airport in town, 0 0.39. Now you get to the south side, Kelly Field about half an inch. Castorville just a tenth of an inch. But you look at the outline in red here, that's the good recharge and drainage zone for the aquifer. So that's where we really like to get the rain, especially right here on the south side of this outline, especially in northern Bear County. So it's good to see the rain, at least where we need it, in terms of the aquifer. So what about rain chances going forward? Let's talk about it. First of all, the overall pattern. This is the system that's exiting. You can see it's a wide reaching spring system, as they often are this time of year. We've got the precip going from the Canadian border all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. That's moving out. On its heels is another upper level disturbance, higher elevation snow, Arizona, New Mexico, and Colorado. It's been good late season snow for the ski resorts in the Rockies, I'll tell you that. And here's another system just adding to it. Well, this is going to pass to the north of us and actually get a little closer than the previous system and help kickstart some more showers and at least some rain chances here and there. So. Let's get to the future cast tonight. Clear sky by early tomorrow morning. We'll have those low clouds filling in and you'll notice some stickiness and mugginess outside low gray clouds and most of the day will be fairly cloudy, but we'll squeeze in some afternoon sunshine, especially along the Rio Grande. You'll have a good amount of afternoon sunshine, a few spritzes and sprinkles and brief isolated showers during the day. It's tomorrow night into Thursday morning where we'll see the energy from that next system. So notice 11 PM, a little bit of activity potentially developing in the hill country. Midnight 1, 2 a.m. into Thursday morning. Uh, scattered activity, especially west of I-35, because that's where most of the energy is going to be to help kickstart these showers and storms. And then as we go through about sunrise on Thursday, we could just get clipped by some of those on the tail end here in San Antonio and some of our eastern counties. And there is the off chance that a few of them could become stronger to severe, particularly in the hill country. All right, today, 51 in the morning. 83 was our high temperature. That's eight degrees above average. Dew points, though, are way down. We've got the dry air that's back in place. The humidity has been swept away. Catula's up to 89. Kerrville, 78. New Braunfels is 80. Pleasanton, 85. San Antonio right now at 81. And we're 79 in Bandera, 80 Randolph. So temperatures for the most part locally right around that 80 degree mark. This evening, comfortable. You don't really need a jacket. I mean, 75 and 8 p.m. 10 p.m. right near 70 degrees and then tomorrow morning we will start at 54 some fog and some sprinkles so a little bit of dampness and then a little bit of afternoon sunshine making it up near 80 with the southeasterly breeze at 5 to 10 and you look farther south and west of town and I think we'll actually see high temperatures 
getting close to 90. And then we're giving it that 40% chance of uh, showers and storms as we get into tomorrow night, especially in the hill country. But otherwise, high temperatures making it to the mid 80s Friday, Saturday with sunshine. Great looking forecast for Palm Sunday. Thank you. All right, the Spurs loss last night was an ugly one. Yeah, that's a tough one because this is a historic homestand before they go out on the road for it will be most of the second half of the season. When we come back, the Spurs stumble against the shorthanded Hornets. We'll show you how that happened. And now Deshaun Watson is facing 14 lawsuits coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs did not give out their historic nine-game homestand the way they wanted to by losing to an undermanned Charlotte Hornets last night. The Hornets look like they have now lost rookie LaMelo Ball for the rest of the season after an MRI here in San Antonio on Sunday confirmed he broke his right wrist during the Hornets' loss to the Clippers in L.A. on Saturday night. But that did not seem to bother the Hornets. This three-pointer by Devontae Graham gave Charlotte a 10-point lead after 131-21. DeJounte Murray would help get the Spurs back in the game as they closed the gap to two, but at the end of the first half, the Spurs are still down by 10 again. 55-45. In the third quarter, the three by Patty Mills gets the Spurs within two again, but going into the fourth quarter, the Spurs are still down 74-69. Derek White hits the three-pointer to tie the game at 74 all. He had 21 then. A few minutes later, he drives baseline for the reverse lay-in, and San Antonio takes their first lead since the first quarter, 76-74. Hornets regain the lead, but the Spurs answer back. DeMar DeRozan puts it up and in, counted and won. He did the free throw to tie the game at 93 and would finish with 28. Still, Spurs down three in the final seconds. Patty Mills three is off the mark, and the Spurs drop 197. Just how important is his homestand when you consider after this, most of the remaining games will be on the road. When you look at the standings, every game is important. Um, bro, there's a bunch of teams all jumbled up in between a couple games, so um, home, away, all games are going to be important. First came back after a long road trip uh, and tough road trip. Um, and and you can see the cobwebs there, but you know, in, in saying that, um, you know, we, we've been always harping on the fact of pulling 48 minutes together, and even the games that we won um, on the road, you know, they they still weren't that 48 minutes, and that was just another example of it. All right, here's a look at the next matchup tomorrow against the Clippers. First game of back-to-back, 7.30 in the AT&T Center. The Spurs now have less than two days to trade LaMarcus Aldridge before Thursday's deadline, or they'll have to buy out the remainder of the 15-year veterans contract, guarantee contract. Aldridge has sat out the last nine games after he was benched by the Spurs, no longer with the team. Speculation by the New York Times says his likely landing spot is in Miami after the buyout. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Houston Texans star quarterback Deshaun Watson is now facing 14 lawsuits for sexual misconduct and inappropriate conduct filed by a massage therapist. The most recent filed last night by Houston attorney Tony Busby that claims Watson is a serial predator. Watson's attorney Rusty Harden says he has strong evidence. One of those suits is false, bringing into question others. We'll keep you up to date, uh, up to date on this throughout the week to let you know where it rests. All right. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Fog tomorrow morning, you'll notice the humidity as well. It'll be a muggy, sticky day, still making it to around 80 for the high temperature and a few stray sprinkles, isolated showers. Better chances some scattered storms as we get into tomorrow night and early Thursday, especially in the hill country, and that's where we could see some isolated, severe activity. The weekend, looking fine. Thanks, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News up next. See you back here at 6.